a 295 run win at the West Test, the Perth Test, the inaugural and probably the only, for now, Boomer Cummins Trophy. Um, that was one hell of a game. India beating Australia when no one really expected it. We didn't. You probably didn't either. And the Australians sure as hell didn't. Welcome to the Kumble Corner. This is the review of the Perth Test. Um, and I, am Super Joshi, joined by Knuckle Brande and Karthik uh, Krishnaswamy. That is right, isn't it, Karthik? It is, yeah. I got your surname wrong. Good. Um, in, my, in my head, I was about to say something slightly different in your surname. Anyway, <laughs> let's start with you. Um, what did you make of that? Uh, me, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, probably one of India's greatest results ever. Uh, I mean, that's kind of an obvious thing to say, but it really is. And uh, given what had happened before they landed in Australia, and given what happened on in the first two sessions of day one, it was just mind blowing result. And yeah, uh, especially with the kind of a uh, team they lined up with, with all the doubts surrounding it, with all the absentees. But then you have like Jaspreet Bumrah in your attack and suddenly like, you know, all that stops being a worry. Okay. Um, we lost on the last uh, edition, you, you started talking about the whole test and I interrupted you to say, hold on, man, I'm trying to get through. You took about the whole series. I said, I'm trying to get through the first day. Um, and, and Knuckle said, you, that I was being very pessimistic. Um, now, with the batting, I was pessimistic. The bowling, I had a bit more confidence. And um, if we go, if someone goes back to listen to the previous show, um, I think that will be uh, confirmed. So after the first innings, that India were, were knocked out for 150, fair to say, I was like, oh, okay, this is not good. Um, luckily, by the end of the day, Knuckle was also proven right. <laughs> Knuckle, that bowling performance. Actually, no, let's start with the batting performance. So what did you make of... It Was there much that the uh, Indian batters could have done better in the first innings? There were a few loose uh, shots. I mean, Jaisval actually you know, trying to drive on the up uh, early on. Uh, they, that particles innings was pretty hard to watch. And I can't imagine it was much fun to play at 23 you. ball. That 23 ball uh, duck. Um, it's really interesting. Looking at the... I hadn't really. It's one of, sometimes when I pitch changes over the course of a test match, you don't really notice it. But then mm. they showed uh, a shot. I think it was on the on the what ended up being the final day of the test match of Coley. Uh, this is on the the Fox coverage, which is what we're getting in the in the UK. Uh, yeah. a split screen of Coley on day one versus Coley on on day three, and the picture changed color completely. It had gone from green to brown. Uh, so. Australia bowled really, really well in those first two sessions. Hazelwood was outstanding. Stark was outstanding. And you you got the impression that it was going to be a test match that was going to end very quickly because uh, not necessarily that Indy would fall over, but that it would be a really low-scoring game. Even more so <laughs> when Bumrah comes out and starts, uh, starts channeling Kirtley Ambrose and uh, suddenly kind of creates that. People, everyone knew, everyone knows he's a, he's a phenomenal bowler uh, and is a bowler who can uh, do things that other bowlers simply can't do. This is one of the first times that we've seen it go from admiration to fear in the opposition. And there was, in in the way that opposition to talk, that uh, the Australian media are now talking about him and the way that he's being um, held up and the the sense that you get when he when he comes on and the relief when he gets through a spell or when he finishes a spell and you're still batting uh he exerted this psychological hold on australia in that final session kind of like he did at lords in in 2021 when all of a sudden he everything becomes him everything becomes about him and it was just incredible to watch i was watching it in in the office at work and i didn't really get much done watching that watching that spell because uh, mm. you just couldn't tear your eyes away from uh from it 
uh, and and then you thought at the end of that day, right? Okay, so this is a really this is a real tricky pitch. This is going to be a pitch where like you know somebody scores sixty and it's going to be a good effort. <laughs> Yeah, can I stop you there? Because I, when I saw the grass uh, uh, beforehand, I thought this is this is troublesome. Um, I did, and and obviously, seventeen wickets fall on the first day. You think this this pitch is going to get a pretty bad rating at that point? But ultimately, like you then said, that obviously the, the pitch changed during the course of it. Um, and Bumrah alluded to that in his post match conversation, um, where he said his experience of, of the pitch in the past and how it speeds up. Um, played a, a kind of a key role in, in how he captained the game quite magnificently, actually. Um, you were going to talk about the next day, weren't you, Nicole? Yeah, and what what ended up happening is so then obviously uh, Bumrah with his very first ball of the uh, uh, of the next day gets Alex Carey, uh, and uh, and then basically only. Only a sort of slightly annoying. There was a, the only period where the game really didn't go anywhere was that period of bowling to Stark and Hazelwood, where suddenly you put everybody back and they're turning down singles, and it all gets very like, what What are we even doing here? Uh, yeah. But then, but then, uh, Jess Van Rahul get through that first session. Hazelwood again bowled pretty well. There were balls passing the bat. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you there, Nicole. I said, I just want to get, get I'm going to pause and still cover the, the first things. Um, Karthik, um, you, uh, obviously I have today in the excitement, I haven't done proper introductions. Karthik, you're obviously a writer at the ESPN Crick Info. Um, what was the feeling around the office at that point? Um, with India coming off the back of um, the, the New Zealand series, about three weeks ago, um, and mm-hmm. Australia being at home, and, and a lot of people tipping it to be five nil Australia. Was there mm-hmm. a, I mean, a feeling? You know, what was your feeling? What was the feeling with your colleagues at the end of day one? Uh, by the end, it was like pretty clear India were ahead in the game, right? Quite even a bit with Stark ahead. still, even with Stark still there. Yeah, yeah. By the end of day one, for sure. But uh, at the start, I think Bumrah, you you mentioned his post match comments, right, about the pitch. Mm-hmm. The thing is, he said it at the toss as well, that this pitch is going to get quicker. Uh, it's, I don't know if those were the exact words he used, but he more or less said that batting would be relatively straightforward, like not straightforward, easier uh, if you're batting first. And then it's going to get a little harder. Uh, I don't think anyone expected it to kind of ease up after that the way it did. But uh, the way day one went, uh, I think that kind of, uh, uh, what's the word? I mean, it went how sort of Bumrah predicted it would. So I think they got a very good call. I mean, they made a very good call at the toss because there's, uh, there's a feeling, I mean, especially among visiting teams in Australia or in conditions where there's so much grass on the pitch. That there's a bit of a safety first thing of okay, let's bowl first here, right? But I think they read they read the conditions really well, and that decision had a bearing on the rest of the match as well. I, I don't know if they would have expected it to favor them to the extent that it did, but they really got that call right. And uh, yeah, uh, as for the feeling uh, in the office, the office was more or less empty because there was just a couple of us there for you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the early morning, whatever, even though Perth isn't as early as the other venues, it was still early uh, and stuff. So there wasn't really much of a feeling in office. It was quiet. But uh, uh, yeah, it. I think uh, 150 all out didn't feel like, you know, it's going to be anywhere near enough for, you know, challenging Australia. Uh Simply because uh, there were so many doubts about India's bowling attack as well, right? Like you look, go back to the toss and you go to all the debates surrounding the selection, and then you have a debutant who's your third seamer, a fourth that seamer. Was, who's, that's what yeah, we discussed right. last week, right? That, that we were kind of yeah. uh, with, with Bumra and Siraj. We kind of knew they're, they're going to be fine. Siraj, Siraj would do better in those conditions. Actually, we weren't even yeah, we weren't even sure Siraj would be fine, right? Like uh, in the sense. No, I thought- I thought it would be okay, but I think we were concerned that the third team wouldn't be able to hold up. Yeah, but think about this. Like, yeah. like Siraj, 
Siraj has kind of dropped for the last test against New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Right, so he's your sort of second seam when Stummy is not around. He's your yeah, in, uh, he's kind of struggled. Book. He's kind of struggled stepping up as the second seamer at times. Mm-hmm. He's been mm-hmm. fantastic as the third seamer behind Boomerah and Shami, but there have been concerns about his ability to step up and kind of lead the the attack in the way. I know he did it at the Gabba, but that was very weird circumstances. Um and he had been bowling, you know, he'd been over pitching and trying too much early in his spells and leaking runs and not giving that control and not having that that Siraj zip that we know he can. None of us were sure who the third seamer was going to be. You know, I said Prasid Krishna. I mean, people thought it might be Harshit Rana. No one really knew. Nitish Kumar already well. people assumed would probably play, but uh, I, Karthik was right, by the way, about his his... I was a little skeptical about his, his batting, uh, which was very, very impressive in the first innings. And then obviously helped Coley put the hammer down in the second. And then still don't really know why they picked Washington over Ashwin and Jadeja. And we've never, re- that's not really been explained <laughs> at any point because it sort of I became think, completely irrelevant to the match. But I think, uh, I, think there's a, there's, I think there's a couple of simple reasons for it. Uh, I mean, one was he's, he is the guy in form coming into the series and he's probably really impressed them in the nets and stuff as well but also like I think he has picked for his batting so it was yeah. a call be- it was a call between him and Jadeja probably I don't know like how uh, uh, he fielded uh, quite a bit right Jadeja every I mean uh, in both innings I think he did a bit of fielding so I don't think there were fitness issues but then he didn't bowl that much in the nets in the lead up as well so I don't know what exactly the status, how bowling fit he is. Maybe he is. But the other decision was probably around, okay, we want someone for his batting. So between the two of them, they wanted probably the off spinner given the number of left handers in Australia's Yeah, I, I, I heard, all, all of that absolutely makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah. kind of between, you can also, that absolutely all applies to Ashwin as well, by the way. Tall, I don't think, but, yeah, but is the batting that tip sit in Washington's favor. Like yeah. you, he's a he's he's a plausible number six, number seven, possibly even further up the order if the situation demands it, where Ashwin at this stage of his career isn't. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose what I'm saying is I don't as far as I'm aware, no one from the Indian management mm. was actually asked the question or really kind of came mm. out and I didn't really come out and answer what the thinking was. So we're kind of there's a lot of plausible explanations. I, I still think that all of those things kind of applied to you can make the same case for okay Ashwin's not maybe not gonna bat six but he was gonna bat seven in this game which he's perfectly capable of doing we know what his record in Australia is like it's very good in the last two series uh there's a, a number of batters particularly Travis Head who have very bad records against Ashwin uh and was he if you wanted to pick a seamer who can bowl and also come to be bat in the top seven that absolutely applies to Jed Ager as well um mm. that the, it, it, it turned out essentially to be irrelevant to the match, but it was, you're right in the sense that while you, you, you assumed that India's bowling would be would be able to take wickets, it wasn't necessarily, you weren't looking at the attack and thinking, mm. right, that's going to rip somebody apart in the same way that you have uh, over recent years. Yeah, Just actually, based on the names of the people who were in it. We got to make the point. I mean, look, there were a couple of guys on debut. We're saying this way because it's in Australia. Um, but also, if we, if we look at the other side, in terms of spin, particularly, I know the Washington took a couple of wickets, but there wasn't. Look, this wasn't really a, 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 a game for spinners as much. But Lyon had a bit of a shocker, and I expected more from Lyon, to be honest. I'm, I don't think he had. A, I think he bowled really well. It's just that you know, by the time he had to do any kind of like long spells and like big bowling workload the match was already kind of gone right and yeah in that, the in life, life. which is how we judge spinners by the way <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no no he, he didn't he absolutely didn't have a shocker i i can't agree with that i mean he bowled he bowled as well as he could have been expected to under those circumstances and he got the ball to like I don't know. I thought he was doing enough in the air, got some balls turning, and like he was. 
yeah and india could take some chances against him by then as well the pitch was not i mean there were some balls that turned but there was not no major uncertainty in their mind so if they decided okay i'm going to like step down and like you know hit a couple over the top they could do that it was that kind of situation as well so there's not much a spinner a finger spinner could have done in any case yeah well it could Unless, unless you bowl medium pace, I know the minus isn't a, a finger spinner as such, but <laughs> <laughs> minus loves uh, stuff. Uh, um, yeah, 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 go, go, yeah uh, trying to go back to his Afrikaans roots, uh, thinking he's uh, suddenly thinking he's turned into Alan Donald. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think Lyon was quite at his best. I thought there wasn't quite that energy through the crease and that that gorgeous overspin and dip and and drift that he gets. But uh, Karthik's right. Like by the time he actually got to do any series, but he bought five overs in the first innings and they were bowled out for 150. Uh, he was basically yeah, sure. bowling in the second innings. He probably, if, if, if there's a criticism, it's probably that he shouldn't have bowled those five overs in the first innings. And uh, especially with Nitish Kumar Reddy, like really taking a liking to him and taking his chances, but they didn't look like chances because even the reverse sweeps, he looked in really good control of those shots. So, one thing we actually haven't talked about much yeah. is it's kind of been lost to all of it. Rishabh Pant played a couple of the most unbelievable shots I've ever seen, even from Rishabh Pant in in that in that yeah. first innings. That falling over scoop flip uh, sort of thing off Cummins was Insane. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, to a fast bowler. Uh, yeah. To Patrick Cummins, like, it's not just any fast bowler <laughs> yeah, as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Uh, uh, he and he and Nitish Kumar Reddy actually kind of gave it gave into something of bowl that feels weird when it's 150. But like uh, he did something, he did a, he hit that crazy six against Saudi as well, didn't he? I mean, uh, that just went out of the stadium. I mean, he didn't fall yeah. over, but it was still spectacular nonetheless. Yeah. Right? And yeah. this is a guy who will walk. He walked down to Anderson. Um, so. Yeah, he's, I think, he's, yeah, he's proving he can he can do it and do it again. Basically. I think he probably. I think yeah. he walked to Hazelwood for his first ball in the second innings. Actually, Lyon, the ball that Lyon got him with in the second innings was a really smart bit of bowling, flying, yeah. uh, throwing it wide. And, and I, I, I didn't think Lyon was quite at his best, um, but mitigating circumstances. And again, but he, he also scored his, very his, little runs, which is what, how we judge spinners. His, his impact on Australia losing this test was pretty minimal. For sure, for sure. Um, shall we? Yeah. Um, we might as well just wrap up the. Uh, the second innings, then, um, guys, if you want to just talk us through it, um, Nicole, I think you you'd started. I'd pause yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Jess Hall uh, and and Kale. Let's start there. I think yeah, Kale in the first uh, innings. I mean, he actually looked all right, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like another series where Kale Rahul has ended up opening, ended up starting the series opening by accident. I said last week he got injured. Yeah, that as well. But I said last week that he he reminded me of my school career. I didn't mean cricketing; I meant academic. Like you do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do well enough in one exam, and did like, but the rest are kind of there or thereabouts. And you got, to, uh, and he did that again. <laughs> He's kind of turned up and done well in, in one exam. Um, and and the thing is, because he is such a an, an attractive looking player uh, in terms of the way he he, he plays that. I think he gets a few more plaudits. And, and I think, KK, I don't think I've mentioned this to you before, but actually I am biased to K.R. Rahul because he's the only one out of the current team that I've actually met um, and had a photo with him. So just purely because I've met him, I'm biased. Uh, not really on on his performance, but just the fact that I've met him. So I want him to do well um, over yeah, and above know, being an if, Indian player. If, 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 you're being, if you're being biased towards someone is to compare them to your academic career, it's... I wonder what being biased against someone would sound like. Uh, he's also one of the very few uh, Indian current Indian cricketers who doesn't have some kind of tragic personal backstory. He's like an old school Indian cricketer. His parents are academics, and he grew up with a uh, not a not a well off, but a sort of middle class life. Yeah. He's from the sort of Rahul Dravid, uh, you know, school of uh, you know, you could be you know either pro- be a professional or be a cricketer. Yeah, and he's married a, an actress as well. well. I mean, a celebrity on top of that. So he's not like um, he's not a Jesswell. No, he's not a Nitish Kumar Reddy or uh, you know Washington Sundar, who's got an amazing personal backstory as well. Or or a Gil. Uh, 
yeah, or, or, or Hardik Pandya, or whoever it might be. Um, and and or I even think Richard, in, or even Richard Pump, uh, who's got quite a quite an incredible personal backstory. But yeah, he he batted. He looked completely comfortable in the second innings, uh, and there was even a periods where Jesfar was maybe getting a little bit uh, over uh, over enthusiastic and just getting a little bit carried away. And KL Rahul just sort of calmed everything down a little bit. Uh, you know, he'd take the strike for a little bit. He'd have a chat with uh, with Jay Svalos. Then he'd sort of just very calmly just punch one past the stumps for four. Uh, and he he batted really well. His res- his reward is almost certainly going to be moved down to number three. But we'll be getting we'll get onto that uh, a yeah. little bit a little bit later. Um, but yeah, Jay Sval, again, as he did in the England series, just gave that impression that there was no way you could bowl at him. If you went wide at him, he cut you either or square drove you. Uh, even against line, that sort of reaching out slap that he played through the covers off 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 Lyon was was remarkable. And then he we he comes down the track and uh it looks the easiest thing in the world to belt a, one of the world's best ever spinners into the crowd. Uh you get a little bit too straight and he finds a way to nudge you for a uh, for for a single or for the bizarre number of threes there were on the uh, on a pretty, pretty slow outfield, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, including one that he he ran really hard for three and nearly got himself run out trying to get Padikal off the mark uh, in the uh, in in the second innings, uh, and he India were obviously he he ensured that uh, that Australia very very quickly were not thinking about taking wickets and trying to set up a, a, a meaningful fourth innings. Uh, and has kind of already become the guy that Australia are, are, are watching out for. Uh, Glenn Maxwell was on the final word, uh, not the final word, on Great Cricketer recently uh, today. In fact, I think an episode came out and said that Jay Swell's going to score 40 test hundreds. Uh, so this is the level of kind of... Uh, Hype that we're that we're at with Jaiswal, and he is the kind of cricketer who invites that kind of hype. Um, and then it set the stage for um, uh, for it was the perfect environment for Virat Kohli to come in and uh, and, uh, and I just want to ask about of, it. so Kale himself to sort of um, going again. So, so look, Kale stuck around with him for a seventy-seven odd um, with with, with Jaiswal. A two hundred run partnership, I think it was. Uh, Karthik, you might have the stats on this. That I think it's when was the last time something like that happened? I think it was a long, long time ago. It was never. I think it was. I, I think I heard somewhere there it was Jack Hobbs and Wilfred Rhodes. The last time a visiting opening pair had put on two hundred against Australia in Australia. So it's quite. Uh, insane. It's quite <laughs> insane. Yeah. 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 Think about Jess that, the, that's, pre, that's pre Second World War. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So uh, two things I want to like bring up about Jaiswal. One is the adjustment he made between innings mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, uh, like he gets out playing the kind of shot that everybody was worried for before the series. They're like, oh, you know, uh, he's going to drive with hard hands and like try to play did on he, the up. Did he do something similar against Newcastle? Uh, not Newcastle, against New Zealand. <laughs> he was out in a similar fashion, I think. If yeah, and he's he's. I think in South Africa as well, he'd been out mm-hmm. that way. So people were worried for him, right? How's he gonna cope? And then second innings, he's letting the ball come to him. I think he shortened his back lift a bit, so he he'd have a little more control of his bat speed and like you know hit the bat path itself. And he was playing so close to his body. He was playing, like, meeting so many balls behind his body and scoring so many runs behind the wicket. So, like, that adjustment between innings is is remarkable for someone so young. And also, just, he's, he's a run scorer. What I mean by that is, like, there are technicians and there are, like, stroke players and stuff like that. This guy, he just knows how to score runs. Like, in there's a kind of... There's this moment where, like, Cummins, I think it's set a field for the short ball. A lot of fielders behind square and square on the leg side. So, there's no mid on. And he kind of bowls what's a pretty good length ball outside off stump. And he just calmly tucks it into that mid on 
season and picks up too. And then, you know, he's just going normally, but every now and then he'd just, just play a shot out of the blue. Like he just literally slogged Mitchell Stark for a, I think it went for four, a one bounce four or something like that. Like across the line kind of hoik. Yeah. But it's like, I think there are just moments where he's like, I can just hit this guy. Or like I can just step out and like hit this, you know, Nathan Lyon for six. And it was a really big six over long run, I think. And uh, one of his sixes, I think, took him past Brandon McCullum for most sixes in a year by anyone in Test cricket. And this is a guy playing his second year in his first full year of Test cricket. And he's an opening batter who's not exclusively known for being like a, you know, big hitting kind of player. He's just got so many ways of playing. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you wouldn't think of him as a... Uh, he's not a Sehwag. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's not, he's yeah. not a Sehwag. He's not a smasher, but he's, he's, he yeah. gets those runs and gets them. Yeah. yeah he has, a really, he has yeah. an incredibly efficient way of just hitting the ball with the fielders are not. Mm. Yeah. And it sounds incredibly easy. Uh, even the it's even the shot he the the ramp to get the to get the hundred. Uh, yeah, this was gonna ask you. Actually, good that was next to my list. Yeah, <laughs> talk about uh, it. which which somehow he managed to put a little bit of fade on, so it went over fine leg. I'm not really quite sure how it got there, but again, like it was, a, it was an edge, guys. It was an edge, a very well deserved edge that actually went all the way, but that it happens. How like. how fast and bouncy <laughs> is the pitch for for that for an edge to go? Obviously, I mean, not, not that it doesn't happen. But, yeah, you know, yeah, so. it's certainly thick inside half of the bat, but mm. but the it, it's a it's a it's an odd shot to think of it in a sense because mm. you know Hazelwood is a very sort of accurate line and length bowler. He's not a bowler who his bounces don't go flying like up past your shoulder where you can just easily. Uh, mm. uh, he had to do quite a lot of work to get himself in position for it. But yeah. it just seemed obvious because okay, there's no fielders there. He's going to probably bowl back of a length. At that point, the bounce in the pitch was still very consistent. So yeah, I'll just ramp it over the over the keeper. He was trying to probably get it over first to second slip. Yeah. Um But uh, but it, it it very quickly once you I think I said this in the in the first uh, last last episode. But once you can get a bowling attack, however good it is, thinking about something other than taking wickets in in Test cricket, you are on top of the batting side, and that's what Jesval. Did. By the way, I just I just looked it up. Um, it's not quite as um, the the last uh, opening pair visiting opening pair to get a double hundred opening partnership in Australia was Atherton and Gooch. Okay, and so, oh okay, ah okay. That's still what thirty years yeah. ago. Yeah, it, it's the yeah. first time no, someone not a uh, pair not from England has done it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And that's, uh, that's with, with um, I think, Sevag hit, what, 100 in the morning or something against Australia once, didn't he? 195 in the, at the MCG, uh, yeah. It, was all of that in the morning? I thought, it was, I, thought I didn't realise the whole... No, he got, out, he got out either just before or just after tea on that. Yeah, uh, but it, it was ridiculous what he did. <laughs> he was yeah, about. I think it's, yeah, it's the first time that India have ever put on a, uh, a double-ton uh, partnership in Australia. The previous uh, best was uh, Chris Shrikanth and Sonal Garvaskod in Sydney in '86. Uh, which was uh, 100 and, uh, 191. It's also uh, the, since uh, ball by ball, complete ball by ball data has only been around since 1998. Uh, yeah. But it's the, it's the, the second longest opening visiting, uh, standby visiting pair after, after Cook and Strauss in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the famous 517 for one. But it's been, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's quite incredible. Um, you mentioned Root, so let's talk about Kohli, <laughs> because because there's always that comparison. I don't think we it's... did mention Root, but never, but we'll go with it. <laughs> no, oh, so you mentioned Cook. You mentioned Cook. You mentioned England. <laughs> making my own segues up. <laughs> ben Duckett, what was? <laughs> oh, ben Duckett, Baba Ben Duckett is very proud of his um his shigir, sh- his ustadji. Yeah. Call him as he was, very, I was, very, as he was great. sitting and watching his the paddle not go up in Jeddah for him. <laughs> yeah, more more about that. More about Jedi, um, Jedi's anon. But um, I think uh, I thought you'd mention Root as well. Quickly, you didn't. You just mentioned England and Australia, and that got me thinking about Root not having scored a ton there. 
um, which is, just seems so, to be the, something that really the, the preoccupied the Darren Lehman, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Festa was, uh, was, was on it with uh, old Ruti. Um, look, Australia have had a, have, have been really struggling in this game. They've been bad. I mean, people, are, Australians are saying Australia have been bad. I don't think they've been bad. I think they've been good. But, um, you know, tongue-in-cheek, we say, have Australia been so bad that even Virat Kohli scored a ton when he hasn't done it in a long time? Um, I mean, look, before Curran flies over and punches me, let's 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 talk about Kohli's innings. Um, because even then, not everyone scored a ton there. Um, and he did it, and he did it well. Um, and was ably supported by... by uh, well, by a few people, but also Dish already, I would say, in the in the latter stages of the game, when of, of the innings where he could just let loose, um, shall we say? Uh, Knuckle, you were going to start talking about that before I paused you, so um, go on, tell us about Coley. Yeah, it was just you couldn't really ask for better circumstances, could you? Then, the if he'd fumbled it there, it would have been a real fumble. Not even that; it was just that Coley, when he doesn't. Coley was able to just think about just batting uh, because there was so much time in the game. They weren't worried about, you know, I was, I was kind of thinking they wouldn't even bother declaring. They just keep, they just keep batting and batting and batting until they get bowled out, you know, try and, you know, England scored 800 or whatever it was in, uh, in Bultan recently. It's if they're going to go and go and try and do something like that. But there was still a good two days left. Even if they'd batted out the day, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, But, uh, Coley was just able to 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 ease himself in. Uh, it must be a really <laughs> odd, an unusual feeling for Coley to be batting and all the attention not to be on him because of the way Jaisfar was uh, w- was playing. And he, you know, he nearly chipped up a chance and when he was when he was still on naught, didn't need the one that just bounced short of a point. But it didn't take him too long until he actually looked just really comfortable and like he was really. Um, at ease with what he was doing, like his feet were moving well, he was driving square, he was getting over the ball, and that he's got out a lot recently. That clip through mid wicket where he's either spooned one up in the air or a or a leading edge or an LBW or something, uh, but it all seemed to be moving really nicely. Uh, I don't know if someone was, I don't know if somebody was sledging him or. or or, or not? I think a lot of the Australians have been saying that they won't, they wouldn't bother sledging Coley because it only seems to uh, to fire him up. Uh, and then there was the there were the little bits of new Coley. We saw we saw some more sweeps than we've seen uh, yes. recently. We saw a lot of very fine sweeps. sweeps. When, yeah, and when Lyon went round the wicket to him, bowling into the rough, uh, he he started bringing out those uh, those those paddle sweeps. He didn't seem bothered when. Nathan Lyon turned one the entire width of the pitch uh, to him that, that bounced over the stumps. And then when he when he decided to cut loose, it was really like one of those Coley one-day innings where he, he decides, right, none of you can bowl to me. I'm just going to go. Uh, like that that second 50 uh, came off uh, 46. First 50 came off 94 balls. His second 50 came off nine, uh, 46 balls. Uh and it was just glorious to uh, to watch. It was kind of at that point, him and Nitish Kumar already were kind of, the result was already quite clear. They were just kind of negotiating over the margins. But mm. it, 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 added that little, it added that little air of sadism uh, to, to what was happening uh, that I just made she... Australia just want to not be there for a little for a while uh, yeah you had, you had to grind him down a bit and look he needed the mid, the practice out in the middle as well um and God, i think it's what is seventh century in australia right that's right yeah uh, again the, the first, again, the first, <laughs> uh, the first uh, non-england player to score that many in australia which is remarkable i, uh, I saw some comments at sorry. six and he's got seven now uh yeah so yeah uh, uh, uh I was just last week, I think. Yeah, I saw some on, comments. Sorry. I saw some comments online um, hmm. that he was fired up more so than usual. Um, obviously, after I think more so after dropping. How can you tell? I think it well. I think it was after dropping the in the first um, the, in the first inning where he dropped the catch. Um, well, it, it fell out while he was falling. Should we say? Like, I don't think I think he's been a bit more docile recently. I believe I mean, it feels that way. Um, but he was certainly a bit more. 
on it. Do you, do you? I mean, do you think that was something to do with it? Obviously, Nicole made the point that um, the Aussies didn't want to sledge him. I mean, Travis Head was giving him a cuddle afterwards. Um, what was your thought on on Virat? Was there was there anything? Did he seem more fired up to you, or was this just people just making things up to fit a narrative? I think there's always a camera on Kohli, and everyone's always like reading his body language. That's just it. Just comes with being Virat Kohli and. Including, uh, sorry, by the way, at the end yeah. of day two, where at the end of day two, where Jess <laughs> yes. and Kale Rahul walk off, and suddenly the camera goes yeah. to Virat Kohli coming out for centre wicket practice, and it looks <laughs> like because he's then applauding uh, uh, it looks like Kohli has come out to to salute the crowd. It's like it's like it's like David. Beck. I mean, it, I mean, I, I'm sure that wasn't his intention. He's coming out to practice, as Nakul said, uh, but. In the end, the effect is of like, you know, uh, anybody scored in the David Beckham Manchester United years, there would always be Beckham jumping on top of his shoulder and like kind of, yeah. you know, giving the impression. I'm sure he was just celebrating and like, you know, whatever. Like, <laughs> well, on, on commentary, uh, sorry, there's a this delay. I'm interrupting you. Got the, sorry, carry on. Yeah. So, I mean, there's always going to be a camera on Kohli and like whatever he does there's going to be 300 people per second like expressing their views on what he's doing right and uh, it's it's amazing how he deals with that because he's just you know he's got a kind of force field around him uh, which you know whether they have appreciating him for that or like uh, criticizing him he's like he just does his thing uh, but yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I'm I don't care about like body language and all of that. Fired up, none of that. There's so much else to talk about. Kohli from that test match, like I mean, how he got out in the first innings and how he reacted to that, for example. Like mm. uh, he was batting so far out of his crease, and uh, I mean, there is a reason for it. Like you know, when they see movement, you're like trying to narrow it down by getting as close to the pitch of the ball as possible. But of course, that opens up these other ways of getting out, and he knows that risk when he takes it. But he thinks he can, like you know, uh, play. He can make the odds work in his favor. It didn't work in his favor in the first innings, and I think he decided, okay, maybe that's maybe that's not the best way to go. And then suddenly, in the second innings, he's still back, still taking stance outside his crease, but in a much more normal kind of position and. You know, doing that back and across trigger, so his back foot is pretty much just in front of the crease. He's like, you know, he's made that adjustment, and uh, yeah, of course, conditions eased up. Of course, like I think he faced uh, of all the balls he faced in, the, in that innings, like seventy percent were from spinners and stuff. So, and India were already leading by three hundred plus when he came in. So it's one of the easiest centuries. He's, there are no easy centuries, but it's one of the easiest centuries he's made in Australia. But it's yeah. really heartening for him that like that like he's made six centuries before this in Australia and like some incredible ones like the Perth one or that Adelaide second innings one or uh, even the other ones in that 2014-15 uh, series, which he made after that terrible tour of England, right? So all of that, none of them came in wins. This one did, and it's probably if you were to rank all of them, it would be at the bottom of the list in terms of how uh, good an innings or how important an innings that one was. But it just goes to show that, like, as much as batters can do, and they, you know, it's like eventually, like, they only have so much of a say in like winning test matches, and yeah. <laughs> even though they, they get the man of the match more often than not, um, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it wasn't even as good as innings as the as his innings in the first innings in Adelaide in 2021, where oh that was looked, terrific. But, no. he, yeah. he looked unbelievable yeah. until Rahane ran him out. Yeah, yeah, and so then, then Rahane made up for that afterwards, right? Um, yeah, but yeah, but I was gonna... sorry, I uh... no, go on. Who were you saying? Yeah, the thing about like the shots he was playing, like uh, I, I I think like it was also I mean it was yes uh, that situation where he could just ease himself in, I think that helped him. But it I think also helped him that there was a bit of a mini collapse at the other end, 
like they lost jaiswal they lost dhruv jurel and one other uh, padik uh, padikal as well and pad right so four for 40 odd and three for eight and uh, i think that in a weird way kind of helped them as well because then suddenly he's like he i think he's at his best when he's having to do a bit of calculating while he bats mm-hmm. and i think that, that mm-hmm. yeah the declaration he knew the declaration was coming and suddenly it became a run chase yeah and yeah when when coley is doing coley is one of the very few people whose mindset is apparently improved by mental arithmetic that's right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. But one thing I saw on comms, you you alluded to to the um, him coming out and uh, saluting Jesswell and, and and KL, and on the commentator was saying he goes, look, he's basically saying to the Australians, by the way, when you get these two out, you've got me to deal with, uh, <laughs> which is, I guess, would be would be frightening, and I think that kind of um, turned out, I guess, right. Now you mentioned the uh, kind of the the, the 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 bit of a collapse. I mean, obviously that was a concern then that. The, there's a great foundation and we've seen that in the past um the the, the big the beginning's been good will the middle order um mm. collapse but luckily that that didn't happen and then ready kind of that lower middle order i guess you would say is, is that fair to say kind of came That's... along and just just shits and giggles let's just bang it out in the park and see what happens kind of thing yeah and that was the kind of situation for which i think washington sundar was perfect right He was doing well in the second innings, apart from that brain fade when he decided to get out. He could have, he could have yeah, stuck around for more. Yeah, he could have. But yeah, I think uh, like he got through that period, and like suddenly India were like, okay, that uh, those wickets were like, it's okay, it's it's done, and we're back in control now, right? Uh, they, mm-hmm. I mean, they were anyway, way way ahead. But like that little partnership with Kohli and Washington just put them like put. Australia back to feeling like okay, where do we even go from here? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it turned like, the target from something unlikely but plausible to something completely ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Was, that. Was she stuck yeah. around for what ninety four balls or something? Twenty nine of ninety four. He was something. Yeah. About the memories. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, one thing we'll say about this, and, and we talked about this earlier, Karthik, is you you had you were doing the early shift. Um, this test made the early starts. The lack of sleep, well worthwhile. I think that's the the main thing I would say out of this victory. It's like you know, the lack of sleep, best of us all. In that sense, sorry, you were going to say something, Karthik. We... Yeah, and uh, I mean, you were asking about Nitish Kumar Reddy as well, right? Hmm. And I mean, there were like some shots he played there with, like that that helicopterish sort of six he hit. And even in the first innings, he hit this risky uh, lofted shot over mid off. Of Lyon and this this guy his confidence yeah confidence and he's got that sort of basic ball striking like a an elite level of ball striking ability right and yeah mm. you see why you see why like selectors pick someone when they don't really have first class numbers to suggest they should be playing test cricket he came out and looked like he belonged um, and he, yeah. he acted like that and he was like yeah this is this is me. Um, yeah, th- that that swagger was was great to see, especially um, given that he came in at seventy three for six in the first innings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly that, exactly that. Um, Captain Saab is 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 back in the country. Uh, apparently, he was facetiming or, or video calling the troops beforehand. Um, Ravi Shastri said when he, he walked into the the Indian dressing room and, and saw that happen. F- um, Fox uh, put up a still photograph of him arriving at the airport. Well, they want those. Uh, they want those numbers. <laughs> I think is probably what they want. Unfortunately, did, Gordon Gobi is going to go. Did a bit of pink ball batting in the nets as well when the match was still going on. I think. Yeah, they were showing those clips yeah. during the during the stream. Uh, I think yeah. uh, unfortunately, Gordon Gobi has had to return home for family reasons. So we, mm-hmm. we hope that's nothing too serious, and he's going to be back before the next match, which is uh, I think it was eleven day gap, which is is quite a lot. Yeah. I suppose it kind of. Um, makes that a little bit more manageable, um, and hopefully, actually, also for for Sharma to get acclimatized and, and uh, Shubman uh, and they play a practice game, game as well. Too. Sure, and, good and game, yeah. Able to recover as well. Um, CA was saying, Quick Australia was saying that the, the game was um, they'd lose about two million dollars a game. 
a day, sorry. So they were hoping it would last more than two days. Um, and it did, but uh, India still made sure they lost some money by wrapping it up in, inside four days, which is unknown. By the by, it's just a bit funny, I think. Um, guys, should, we're going to talk about, we, we have to talk about. We should it. talk about Jaspreet Bumrah, I think. Go on, then. I was I mean, about yeah. it. Sorry, like, uh, I feel like we've gotten quite a <laughs> bit of distance into this podcast and like we've really not spoken about the, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the sort, of, sort of take his absurd yeah. excellence as red. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was just, it's something else. I, he, he's not only a great bowler, he's also got a great booty as um, his, his wife said. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one of the most pure, wonderful <laughs> moments that I can remember as as a cricket fan. It was just... Flirt, flirting with your spouse in public should be encouraged. It's absolutely wonderful. It, it follows up on the "What's for dinner" comment uh, after their interview. I think last time it was that was at the World Cup, uh, which was was gold as well. Uh, uh, Sajjan uh, is a media professional. She knows what she's doing. Uh, yeah, and imagine you, you imagine you're a good looking media professional and a sports presenter in a in a female, in a male dominated game, and you're out with your other half, and no one's interested in you. They want to talk to him. No other female sports personality has that experience, I reckon. <laughs> no, I, I suspect my auntie Lundgren is not particularly bothered by Stuart people asking for Stuart <laughs> Binney's autograph uh, uh, when they're when they're out in public. But yeah, people, it's been picked up so much that some people are starting to get annoyed by it. The fact that people have recognised the fact that you know Boomer has these odd physical quirks in his action, which make him even harder to play than he already is. Like the fact that he's bowling from like a f- He's releasing the ball from like a foot in front of the crease. Uh, well, look, the, if the Australia fact, Australia can't can't report him though, can they? <laughs> oh no, no, no one say anything about that. But the fact that like uh, the fact that he his the, his angle of release means that there doesn't seem to be any clear difference between his bouncer and his uh, and his regular length deliveries. The fact that he can bowl uh, like big dipping slow balls at the very last minute with no apparent change of action. Uh, the fact that you can't quite get set against him and your trigger movements are a bit off because of the because of his because of his run up and the ball comes out a little bit later than you think it's going to. He'd be it's hard enough to face good. with those skills and that pace and that competitiveness and that ability to suss out a batter in conditions, even without all these uh unusual qualities to him that just kind of maximize and add to how difficult he is to face. And now he's added that he's gone from kind of being an awkward customer to a really good bowler to carrying an aura with him mm. uh, that we really don't see very often. And he's, you know, if you're picking a 21st century world 11, he's absolutely, he's in there. He's in, he's in, in an Indian all time test 11 for me, no question. Yeah. And he's, uh, one of the all time yeah. one of the all time absolute great fast bowlers. I don't know. There's a lot of there's been a lot of incredible fast bowlers uh over the years. But but Boomra is it is doing things at such a high level and has been doing for such a long time that we don't I think we're no longer we we've long since passed the stage of him being a bowler with an with an unusual action. He's he is a genuine out and out banker match winner in any conditions and you know a lot of captains i'm sure have counted themselves very lucky to be able to just throw the ball to just be boomerang and now just be boomerang knows what that's like yeah and he said obviously i can decide when to bowl because i know when i'm fresh or not i mean look <laughs> there are plenty of players with unusual actions unusual stances when batting they're not all just be boomerang. That's not. I mean, so yeah. there, there is yeah. some, something aside. Yeah. That, if you can have an amazing booty and still have an average around twenty, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, boot, the booty is an important skill and an important physical attribute for a fast bowler. As has been as, Fred, Fred known, said that, right? as has been known for many many decades. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, by the way, best in current in current cricket, Lungi and Gidi. Uh, look it up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> l- look it up. Um, but a couple of a few of the deliveries that. He, Boomer bowl. Boomer, even when he's not bowling well, 
which is a relative t- thing in Bumrah's case, uh, takes wickets. But like the ball he got Smith with in the first innings, uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> the perfect ball to pre- oh. to play on a on a on a on a batter who's trying to find his form, who loves to jump across the crease. He suddenly gets balls basically an off break at eighty five miles an hour. He was a Travis Head inside edge away from. Fr- I actually look. I actually found myself. I was looking through the list of all of the Test hat tricks. I think Labuschagne, Smith, and Head would probably have been the highest caliber Test hat trick ever. Uh, and hmm. he was a, a Travis Head inside edge away uh, from from that. I slapped. I slapped the sofa hard when that happened. I was like, no. I was watching that that bit. I saw live, and um, that was that was painful. Come, comes back on and gets Travis Head in the second innings with a ball that really deserved to be at a more crucial juncture of the match, <laughs> to be honest. like That's the sort of thing that <laughs> you think should decide like a, a nail-biting test rather than just making an inevitable win even more inevitable. But it was just an unbelievable bit of, bit of bowling. Um, uh, completely uh, tortured, Labashachni in the first innings, uh, bowl the ideal delivery to uh, to McSweeney uh, early mm. on, and then completely scrambled Manus again in the second innings. Um, yeah, Manus Manus tried to to be um, an anchor and got what two of fifty two balls or something like that. I think he didn't get off, didn't get off the mark until about thirty balls in or something, and, and like got that. beaten. God knows how many times he said he wanted to be Pujada. Uh, I think as somebody pointed out, he forgot the bit where Pajara scored runs. Yeah, even no matter how how slowly. Well, with Bumrah, like this is the feeling I got, KK. Um, mm. Bumrah gave the other bowlers a chance. He's, he's like, you know, he, mm. he, he could have got them all out. And he's like, you know what? I'll let the other boys play. Let the, let the Bache play for a while. You guys have a bowl. I'm going to go chill for a while and I'll come back on. It's like, it just felt like he could take wickets at will during this innings. Yeah, and to give that feeling is... Like Nakul said, it's, I mean, to hear the commentators go on and on about his action now, like, how many years has it been? 2018, he made his debut, 2024 now, and we're still talking about his action. Yeah. And we're only talking about his action. When the, I mean, this is a guy with that action, it should be impossible to bowl an outswinger, like, to the right. <laughs> you would think. But then he bowls, he swings the ball both ways. Uh, yeah, but he does have one, as Keaton Jennings found out to his cost that in England. Exactly that, right? Yeah. and But beyond all of that, beyond all the variety he's got, beyond the quirks of his action, and beyond... Short run-up as well. Oh, yeah, that too. But beyond all of that, <laughs> the, the, the thing that really makes him like a level, puts him at a level above anyone else right now, is that on that pitch, right, where India, they were 150 all out, yeah. All 10 of their wickets were like catches, right? Yeah. And that that's like what you would think is typically Australian kind of conditions type uh, scorecard, right? Where everyone's getting out caught in the slips or caught wicket keeper, stuff like that. First slips and building on the boundary because the ball's flying through. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Bumda, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, and Bumda, he starts his spell and then... Uh, Immediately, uh, Nathan McSweeney, there's two LBW appeals against him, I think. One where he's leave, uh, trying to leave the ball. And then both, like Bumrah realizes it's going over the stumps. And within the matter of the next over, he's found the perfect length to get McSweeney LBW. And then having gotten Usman Khwaja out, he gets Smith LBW. A guy who shuffles so far across his crease to be able to pitch it on that perfect spot, bring it in as much as he did and still hit his pad just in front of off stump and, you know, finish somewhere around leg stump. He, he, right? he, he, he bowled bo- bo- to where he was going to be, basically. He That's did incredible. the thing that bowlers yeah. tried, spent four years trying to do to see Smith and couldn't. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that everyone tried to do to Smith. Like, oh, he goes miles across his stumps. He's going to miss one eventually. He didn't miss a ball for about four years. Now he starts yeah. missing them. And Boomerah is one of the very few guys who's good enough and quick enough to do to exploit that. Yeah, and the precision to be able to like pitch it exactly where he wants and like move it probably more or less exactly how much it want, he wants it to go. 
against a batter of that caliber right and forcing a batter of that caliber who's had such success with that method forcing him to come back in the second innings and play in a completely different way he was suddenly batting on middle stump not shuffling just taking a very very small trigger movement back and across and you know that comes from like a bowler like that really like ripping apart or at least you know smith must have thought okay i can't be doing this in this game against bumrah so yeah that's that's how good bumrah is and like uh, any i mean travis head in the second innings you brought up that dismissal right he'd been like it's not like uh, harshit rana was really bowling wide long hops or anything but head is the kind of guy who doesn't need that much width to really free his arms and just smash it through the offside and he just kept doing that and i think after uh, the interval was it uh, 140 i i don't even remember that now but anyway after that interval uh, head and marsh was scoring at a runner ball for like 8 9 over and then bumrah comes back and he bowls that line where you know it's outside off stump but like suddenly like head is not like cutting it with like a horizontal bat but he's going with that angled bat so immediately brings that outside edge into play and he's gone like that's the kind of thing that and having through the uh you know the rest of that over he'd been bowling it sort of at his body or at the stumps not giving him that width and then he gives him like a little bit of a glimpse of width and he goes after it and he's gone like he's he's just an extraordinary bowler and uh uh right through the test match like there was interest in whether his average would finish below 20 by the time the match was done mm-hmm. it's i think a few decimal points above 20 right now but basically like of all bowlers with 150 plus wickets i think it's just him and sydney i think it's just sydney bands ahead of him i think at some point right. in the game he was he was under 20 that's right yeah. sydney bands is an all time freak yeah who and basically, who basically bowled like high 70s uh, miles an hour finger spin on uncovered wickets yeah he, he was a kind of he was a kind of bowler he was a kind of he was an as quick as bumrah surely but from all accounts of having read him uh, read about him it, it feels like you know because it's hard to classify him i think crickinpo has him down as a fast bowler but Uh, he's called he, 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 he cutters basically he bought five but, cutters but if you said that to him he hated it he was like no i spun the ball i didn't cut it right so he considered himself a fast spinner who could not just spin the ball but also swing it and you know but basically like reading all that and then you know you're like okay you know that this was guy, the boomer of his a, time this guy was a freak yeah and you know plays only like doesn't play county cricket plays only in the lancashire league and then comes and plays test matches and just takes seven wickets a game right so i mean it is a long long time ago yeah and th- there's a freakishness to that which you know again you see that with bumrah as well and it's very like for a century people have been more than a century people have been like is there a bowler who can match up to sydney barnes and now you have somebody who is like yeah just see just akoi ni basically is what you're saying pretty much yeah yeah um can we talk about um the other bowlers one another one a debut mr rana had had a few had a, had a friendly chat with mitchell stark as well <laughs> what, a, what did you make of it? that was a, that was a lovely they're, they're teammates uh, right <laughs> that was a lovely bit of i i've never understood the i the you know you you hear commentators talk about you know they need to be nasty and you know alan border was doing a lot of commentary in this test match and there was a little hint of that throughout it throughout that you know you, you can't be nice to these guys i i don't buy this at all you are never more competitive than when you are playing against your friends yeah 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 you you never want to to do be- to do to do well when you've got to see the guy that you that you're that you're going up against 
it's going to be giving day. you trash talking on whatsapp 100 percent, 100 percent. you can leave your enemies uh uh when you when you finish the series your friends are there with you the whole time um yeah but also actually how should they run i lost 17 kilos uh this year in the lead up to this series which sounds frankly an unhealthy amount of kilos to be losing quite quickly um yeah but, like, he is uh he is what a uh what well, a famous boxing commentator in the UK refused, refused, uh, big, strong boy, big, strong boy. He is a big, strong boy. <laughs> uh, he's got huge shoulders. Uh, mm. He, he looks like an Australian fast bowler in terms of his physique. <laughs> yes. uh, like he's sort of got, he's kind of vaguely triangle shaped because his, his shoulders are so, so wide. And, you know, the amount of times I heard he bowls a heavy ball on, uh, on commentary, which is one of those cricketing phrases that doesn't mean anything, but everybody knows, what it means and like you know i said that i would have gone for prasad krishna that's purely out of familiarity because i've seen a bit of prasad krishna uh up close and but harshad rana also has that ability to get disconcerting bounce off a length and get the ball to move in sharply and uh he's at you all the time uh, he took the wicket of head in the first innings, which was with, a, with an absolute center, cracker. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely yeah. cracking delivery. Uh, and, and he looks he uh, he did not look like a guy on on debut at all. Uh, yeah, and that that's brilliant um, when these guys can feel like they belong straight away. We've we've seen enough, unfortunately, people like Kes Barrett. Um, you know, he he came in and, and maybe his position was slightly different because he'd been an understudy for so long. But he just flapped around for a while, and that's why Drew Jarrell came in as as the wicketkeeper because he was just sturdier, right? Um, and although we, you see a few of those over the years, that it happens. People players who come in for their debut, um, having you know performed well in first class or whatever else, and have obviously earned the spot, but for whatever reason, on the day or it, whenever they've been given chances, it just doesn't quite look right. Whereas Rana. Looked the part, um, and the other chap we were mentioning earlier on, also uh, Nitesh Kumar really looked the part when they came in, um, and that's I guess uh, it is really you know um, is good to see. What well, what we're talking about selections and stuff, um, something that we didn't put in our list actually. Um, Gotti Gambit, um, do you think what do you think he's learnt from this? Would you? I mean, how would you assess? his input into this because actually from from the outside it looks like pretty much this was Bumrah thinking of what to do it didn't feel like there was a team it just felt like it was Bumrah even as captain but I'm, I'm surely there must have been some discussions with coaching staff have you heard anything seen anything because I've not actually seen any media interaction with Gumbi either yeah I mean it's very hard to say who uh I mean it's obviously like all the decisions go through like uh, at, at least the strategy. Sorry, no, no, not just not just the selection. I don't mean sorry. I, I, mm. I misled. The way that I said that question was not right. I didn't just mean the strategy. I just meant overall everything in terms of the coaching, the planning, the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, it's it's really hard to say who uh, a comes up with these plans and who gives them the final sort of like approval. And it's like this is a bit of a committee kind of thing with captain, coach, and you know maybe a couple of senior players, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think what uh, I feel like Rana, uh, Reddy, and uh, Washington playing this game. There's a bit of a stamp of Gambhir about that decision to me. Like uh, again, I don't know how he is in a team environment or how he thinks when you know he's not like w- w- what you are as a media personality can be very different to what you are when you're like handling a team right you don't you don't say the kind of major things that he often does say when he's uh, asked to say that in the capacity of you know a media interview right yeah. like uh, yeah so uh, I, I, we'll, we'll I, definitely I don't... get onto that when we talk about hazelwood <laughs> but yeah too similar um yeah yeah so, yeah so i'm sure i'm sure he's, he he might be like a far more measured and like thoughtful kind of character in a dressing room environment but picking all of those three felt like a very gumby thing. Just I don't know from how it just felt. Uh, Washington... Sorry, go. No. Yeah, and uh, I think just bringing like the whole Washington Sundar arc of bringing him out of the Ranji Trophy, like just being like, look, you know, 
I'm sure the selectors played a part too. They must have watched because he came in. We thought because he scored that century and like gives them a kind of all-rounder option. But they were really looking at probably a really improved bowler who also comes in with this hugely impressive batting ability. Uh, did Washington yeah. do enough? To, did you think he's done enough to keep his position, keep his place? I, I I think every Test match in this series it's going to be conditions driven. I mean, uh, we spoke about how impressive Rana looked, right? And he did. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the raw material is fabulous, but uh, he was helped by the conditions on day one, especially, and uh, on in in on a flatter pitch. I think in because he went at like four point something through this Test match, right? I think India might not want to risk playing him where he doesn't get quite so much help. Uh, so you know he's he's a work in progress, but the raw material is amazing. But it's pretty, yeah, pretty unlikely, question, it was pretty unlikely yeah. anyway that barring potentially Bumrah, it'd be pretty unlikely for any of the other fast bowlers to play all five Test matches anyway. Yeah, maybe Siraj yeah. because of his experience and like you know he looks in superb rhythm. Uh, honestly, uh, I think just playing like in India, I think you need slightly different old ball skills compared to what you need. When there's a bit of seam movement and like his his wobble seam ball really comes into play and all of that, uh, so I think Siraj, if he's fit, if Mumra and Siraj are fit, they're probably going to play all five tests. But the rest of the attack, I think they'll pick based on the conditions, and that goes for like Washington as well. If they think they want a spinner who needs to bowl long spells and needs to really like take up a large workload, like a Comparable one to Nathan Lyon, they might go with Ashwin or Jadeja, or in maybe if it, yeah, maybe two spinners in some conditions. So they have different options. I don't think they're yeah. going to be wedded to. Uh, okay, he did well here, therefore we have we have to pick him in the next game. Squad game, basically. Yeah. Um, squad yeah. Series. Yeah, that, that seems fair. I mean, you raised the point there about uh, extended periods. Can Washi handle extended periods as a sole spinner? That, that's like an unknown, really. You know, yeah, I think he has ability, Ability-wise, I think he has it, but I think there's still a little bit of... He's still learning to bowl in test cricket, I think. Yeah. Uh, and when you're playing away from home, you, you've got to learn so much more... Uh, I don't know, people who start doing well in Australia do it on the second, third tours, right? And yeah, and as, as much as... With, as with much the exception as, of Siraj. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about spinners here, yeah. Ah, uh, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't know if they'd quite trust Washi with, like, kind of conditions where they, like, look... They're picking you for your uh, bowling and not so much your batting. Sure. Well, look, we're going to delve into that more in the next episode because mm. uh, Kameen, there's enough space for us to do a preview of the Adelaide day-night um, game next week. Um, and there'll, I think there'll be plenty of conjecture and things to talk about and, and new information that comes out by then. And a um, talk, Well, yeah, mm. <laughs> and that as well. Uh, guys, um, Agatha, you obviously just mentioned Gumbu's uh, press manner, media manner. Um one person has been criticised from the Australian side, Josh Hazelwood, uh, for something he said, and I think he's he's been criticised for things he said in the past as well. Um, I'm not sure this is a Michael Vaughan just taking the piss of Australians, just just making something out of nothing. Um, Ravi Shastri backing him up, but what did he say? What's what's the game? Uh, what's the plan now? And he said, "Well, ask the batsman. I'm going to be, um, you know, relaxing, getting a massage, and thinking about the next game." On the one hand, it's, it's quite a flippant comment. So look, I've done my job. All the batters know more. Um, on the other hand, it's, it's defeatist. He's already thinking about the next game. Um, he's not thinking of winning this game. Or you could say, again, on the other side, actually, he thinks the batters have got the job in hand, which I think is, is a point no one's making. Um, <laughs> what do you make of this? And then the Australian meltdown as a whole... Because Australia really have, uh, you know, it's just like it's like it's like India was after the second game against New Zealand after the series loss. It's like everything is wrong. Sack the whole team. Talking about people saying Manus should be um, playing club cricket, 
Uh, Not just club cricket, second or third team club Second cricket. or third, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly the third. I mean, that uh, yeah, was quite ridiculous. Uh, look, this is the classic journalist trap. We say all the time that we want people to be themselves in press conferences. Why are they so media trained? Why do they give us such boring answers? And then someone comes out and says something that they actually think. And we say, why did you say that? Uh, this had yeah, such a, I like, again, reference to Greg again, any danger, lads? It basically, every bowling around lads. the world ever has thought, lads, can you just give me a little bit of help talking to your batters? The amount of times that James Anderson must have wanted to say this uh, in in public uh, mm. after he's had to come out and bowl three hours after he's just ta- just just bowled again. Yeah, there was a. Uh, I I thought it was quite. I thought it was quite sort of refreshing, but unremarkable. Uh, to to be honest, I mean, what is he supposed to say as a number eleven when Australia are five hundred behind? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I really, and then why are you asking it, the number eleven for batting plans anyway? Like, well, well, he was the he bloke. For, him. He was the guy they got. He was the guy that they. He was the guy that Australia obviously put up for the media that morning, and they they have but to what, ask him that. Like, the only well, time it gets to him, to right? The plans the plans are out of the window anyway. Really, at that point. Well, I get what sort of plan are you supposed to have when you're five hundred behind and seven wickets down? That block. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. I think. I think. Sorry, you were going to say something else, Makul. Yeah, it's just it's hmm. and and the the controversy or the uh, the people piling on with their takes about it is just the sort of thing that happens when it's the sort of thing that happens when you're losing, and not just when you're losing, when you know you're going to lose, and you and it's going to take a few hours. There's a lot of time to fill on radio. There's a lot of time to fill on TV. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, column inches to fill, and you, and so you, you you seize on this, and then try and say, is there a rift in the team, and uh, and and all of this stuff. Um, it is, I thought it was quite refreshing, frankly, from Josh Hazelwood uh, to to say, like, ask the batters. This is not my department. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, what about the rest of the Aussies? Oh, sorry, Don, you, you, you've got another point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I think I think the question itself is like a bit of a stock question, right? And you know, what is anybody in that situation going to say? I think someone in Josh Hazelwood's position, after like bowling a lot, bowling beautifully, if I may add, uh, and you know, without any luck and like. Uh, being out on the field when like there's really nothing you can do now to change the course of the match, and then he comes out and then he hears this question like I and like it's okay to express a little bit of irritation with both his batters and the media person asking that question probably. Uh, I didn't. I, I listen. I heard the interview. So I, I didn't. Yeah. To be fair, I haven't heard it. I've only read. Yeah. So, the I, so I heard yeah. it. This was it was on ABC mm-hmm. before play on this. Uh, um, it must have been before day four, um, and and it was there was no agitation or anything in his voice. It was a completely mm. normal uh, mm. interaction. There was it was it was the journalist saying like, you know, what what's the plan? Which is the question you're going to ask anyone mm. before the start of a day's play. And Josh Hazelwood saying, uh, "Oh, look, basically was the was the tone of it. Like there was mm. no." Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe there was a bit of like any danger of you guys scoring some runs and doing your job, uh, but like it wasn't. It wasn't a rant. It wasn't angry. It wasn't mm-hmm. anything like that. It was yeah, just very uh, frank and Australian, <laughs> basically. It's just he says what he thinks. Like you know, you know, he he was the one who said during the T Twenty World Cup he was joking about Australia tanking it against Scotland to knock England out. Exactly mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think as consumers of like uh, press conferences and like media interaction, I think we put far too much store in like, oh, this person said this, and therefore that's exactly what the team is thinking in the dressing room. This person said this, and oh, therefore everybody in the dressing room is gonna react to it, and you know, 
there's going to be an adverse kind of i mean there's going to be a it's going to sour the, the dressing room environment or uh, this person said this and therefore uh, you know like oh the uh, you don't say that in public all these things uh you can say what you want in the sanctity of the dressing room but i think a lot of it is like these are adults and they you know they understand that doing a press conference is just one of the things they have to do as part of their job and like i don't think any of them if 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 it didn't uh lead to so many sort of like if it didn't consume so much of their time and if they weren't constantly being like made to do this and made to like i don't know uh get so much more follow up uh, because of what somebody said i don't think they'd care one bit about like what they publicly saying right now, a, a lot of athletes spend their press conferences trying to say whatever will end the press conference fastest quickly yeah that's right yeah uh i i i think this was a of all of the things that australia have to be exercised about this really isn't one of them i mean it reminds it reminds me exactly of like uh the new zealand series right and rohit sharma was like uh matlab 12 saal like in 12 years uh you are allowed to lose once or whatever right? and <laughs> of course especially he said in his marathi way as well like, <laughs> in his mumbai kind of way right and yeah yeah it was i mean you there you can look at it two different ways you can be like yeah that's that's right that is true and like you're playing a sport you will lose at some point and like if you've not lost for 12 years and like then you lose and he got that, slacked you know, off that big time he got exactly. slacked off so much right yeah, yeah. and then people were like comparing that to oh you know uh it's uh, like virat kohli and ravi shastri would never say something like that and uh, without going into whether or not because i don't remember every single thing they said right but without going into that they were going into that uh, i mean people are like oh they'd be like you know like so visibly upset and angry at uh, after defeat and stuff and sometimes they'd be very critical of their own players and stuff at the time when it was happening they got a lot of negative press for that also like oh you don't like hang your players out to dry and stuff like that why are you being so there's, emotional why are you being exactly so yeah, yeah. You know, there's no winning as a player in a press conference after you've lost a match certainly not oh. by nearly 300 runs yeah it wasn't 300 though was it it was less than 300 nearly 300 nearly 300 mm-hmm. it's deeply disappointing it could have been 300 but they gave a few runs too many didn't tell the wickets mm-hmm. fast enough We've had a nice ring to it. <laughs> um, well, all right, guys, you've just um, you defended Hazelwood um, using the example of Rohit Sharma, which actually I think is probably fair to be honest. But the Aussies are having a bit of a meltdown. Um, and look, um, <clears throat> there was two things I wanted to mention to you, and it's something you talked about uh, slightly earlier. You, but who was the player? It just it's been a long day. Who was the player that got bonked on the head? Uh, I think it's by Harshad Rana uh, in the second innings, uh, Australian player. Uh, he went to the start, got hit at one point, didn't he? Yeah, I think it, I it think was, it was yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, start. Was yeah, hit at the back of the head mm-hmm. or something, right? No, he got hit right oh, on the front. He got hit on the grill. Yeah, the front. Yeah. Oh, no, Sorry. Right yes. Bad. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he had to do concussion tests or something. Well, there was a mm-hmm. Harshad Bogle was saying on on commentary that his his thinking was so apparently what happens is that the Australian team had just have a load of helmets because uh like in a in a team kit bags it's not necessarily like a because they all have to conform to specific specifications sure um and they were basically just trying to find one that fit which implies that Mitchell Stark has a massive head okay well as you know there was there was some poor guy on the who's working there who got hit as well um yes boundary that was sad uh, I, mm-hmm. I wasn't talking about him um, that was just unfortunate yeah, that was a coley uppercut Yeah, 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 yeah. Head on the head. That's mm. a lot of very unfortunate. Maybe they should give these guys some some more protection, or, or tell them look out as a four coming your way or something. Especially Maybe. when they're supposed to be looking at the crowd and not at the match. Yeah, because there's no chance it's, for you. You can't move yeah, out of the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, look, whoever the Australian 
batsman was that was uh, hit, you know, hit on the head and <clears throat> I think had a concussion test afterwards or funny helmets or whatever. Brent, Brent Lee was on comms and he was, I didn't know if you saw this bit or heard this bit. And he was saying how I would, uh, he said, yeah, now I'd be getting Boomer back. I think he said, get Boomer back on and start roughing him up a bit. <laughs> to bowl a few bounces. And his co-commentator, the Australian, was also uh, saying, oh, you're a, you're a tough guy, Brent Lee. You're, that's, that's, you're a harsh man. But I think there's a, there's a bit of an Australian attitude about that. Um, do you think in the net there's going to be some pressure in the next few games? It just reminds me of, of how Warren was criticised for being friendly with Peterson. Do you think there's going to be pressure on the Aussies to be a bit nastier? No, it's maybe? already started. It started before the Test match finished. Okay, I'm not joking. Well, the, the reason I'm not the joking. reason I, I didn't think it was because Head had his arm round Coley at the end, but I know there was some talk. God, well, tell me, pe- tell me what pe- it is. People are already people have already been saying that Australia are being too nice and that they aren't being hard nosed enough that they're not being Steve War, Alan Border enough yeah, yeah, yeah. and no, people, you know, talking it. about um you know, them all being friends in, in the IPL and, and stuff. Uh, no one was saying this when they were winning the World Test Championship. No one was saying this when they were uh twelve months ago won the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, or <laughs> when they were pushing India really hard in India last year. Uh yeah. like Utter woke nonsense is what they're saying, basically, about Cummins, who is known for environmental things. If that makes you woke, I mean, I don't know. But it, yeah, it's, or like, it's, or it's like quite ridiculous. Not going out of your way to be an asshole. Oh, okay. Because Cummins has actually proved you can win without being an epic asshole. He's, he's, I mean, he, he's won the World Cup, won the World Test Championships. Do you win the tweet twenty as well? Um, no, well, that's Finch. He was he it? was in it. Finch was Finch was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, yeah, this, no, this guy uh, he's he's done it. He's delivered as an Australian captain without being a knob. <laughs> Essentially, I, I always got the impression with some, like in particular Steve Smith, that that whole macho carry on was actually a distract was actually distracting, and it wasn't really what he wanted to be doing. And it was uh, an act. Yeah, a hundred a hundred percent. Like. Australia aren't going to win, come back and win this series, which they could well do. Like there's still four Test matches to go. By suddenly flipping and being all snarly and 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 nasty, they're going to win it by figuring out a way of their top order surviving Bumrah, basically. Uh, and you. like <laughs> this was one of one of the stats was uh, this is the lowest. Uh, overall match contribution of Australia's top five since 1888. <laughs> their, their top five be- scored 57 runs between them over the course of two innings. Like, that doesn't happen because you happen to know someone and quite like them on the opposition. Uh, or yeah. because you aren't going out there and questioning somebody's parentage when they're batting and you're at second slip. Even though I'm glad that Quadra remained likable after this um, this match, um, I was worried that he was going to be hitting runs and make me <laughs> make me distest him slightly. <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. And then we talked about the exchange between Stark and uh, Runner, and that was like a friendly reminder. It's like, look, uh, what he exactly what he said. I bowled faster than you. I've got a long memory, and he said it with a smile. But that was, I mean, that wasn't Pally. That was like, that was threatening with a smile. Um, it's, it's it's that's not a knife. This is a knife. It's the most quintessentially Australian thing, actually. In that moment, I think Mitchell Stark did. He it was, was right it now. was it was a word that <laughs> I absolutely detest, but it was a word that, uh, in its truest form, banter. In its original, non toxic form, banter. I didn't... It was two banter? guys who it was two guys who know each other, yeah, having a bit of a dig at each other and trying to get the competitive juices flowing in the same way that Jess while telling Stark it's coming too slowly, <laughs> <laughs> which is just, just wonderful. That's quite funny. And there's another one. Where Probably not was... the wisest thing to tell a fast bowler, to be honest, but no, no. Well, unless you make them lose their control. Riley Rana said, had a go ahead and said, you can't face this attack. And what well, head said, well, I, I did none of the <laughs> basically. That's that's that reminds me of Broad trying to sledge Ganguly and Ganguly give him a mouthful. Um, it's like you kind of yeah know your position, young man, <laughs> a little bit. So these conversations that happen like every five minutes in in Test cricket that we wouldn't that we didn't know about before stump mics were a thing. 
Yeah, and then some point they turned on, and Pant was just talking very um, positively in Hindi. I don't know what he was saying. Either dal ya. Um, I can't. I can't even remember what he said. It was just quite mundane what he said, basically. Just wiki keeper stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, yeah. It was just. It was nothing exciting, nothing juicy. I wish Roy Sharma and, and uh, Virat had been there. There might have been some gardening comments and some, yeah. Uh... Actually, you're on that, um, and I flagged it. My earliest memory of Virat Kohli is taking a catch and just shouting Ben Stokes very loudly and passionately. And and it's been a while, but but when the final was that the fell, same tour he gave the middle finger to the crowd in Australia? Australia, I can't yeah. Australia or England? I think Sydney. Like that. Sydney, England. I think. <laughs> I don't say me, 2012. Yeah, it's first tour in Australia. Yeah. Perhaps. Um, yeah. For some reason, I thought that was in England, but uh, with the, him taking the catch and shouting that. But certainly he did that as soon as the um, the last wicket was taken. He was this, and, and twice he said it. You could see it behind Boomer, and I was like, oh, okay, that's good. He's he's back on it. He's fired up. And that that kind of, I mean, look, I'm, I've been told I'm a bad guy because I enjoy people swearing in Hindi, but um, it's just funny. Maybe because it was so taboo around good language like, to as growing up. It's a, it's a good language to swear in. Yeah. Especially in the sort of Northern Indian Punjabi way. I think... Yeah. I think yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I, I once heard Ross Taylor at Slip saying Ben Stokes as well. <laughs> it, became a bit of a, little, it became a bit yeah. of a thing for a while, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Delhi boys in Delhi, in, in apparently the, well, the, I guess the the the, the, the uh, stereotype in Delhi is that it's not actually a swear word; it's just, it's punctuation. Yeah, it's like the c word. Yeah. It's like the c word is actually affectionate in Australia. Yeah, absolutely, they will use it freely, <laughs> freely, um, which is is quite bizarre for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, uh, okay. Well, look, Australia. I think we've they are are where where. India were, um, and India mm. have done in New Zealand essentially what no one expected them to do. Um, mm. TGC, oh. you mentioned them earlier on, who have been talking about the Anzac series, and essentially it's three one right now. It's an eight match series. Uh, so <laughs> someone, somebody has I to be in, that. somebody has to be in crisis at all times, particularly during a border Gavaskar uh, series. Somebody has to be in crisis and falling apart at all times, and currently that role is Australia. They've, they've already said they're keeping the the same thirteen uh, for uh, for the next test. Uh, there's a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, concern about uh, concern about Mitchell Marsh's uh, fitness because of, you know, the fact he's massive uh, and hasn't bowled for a while, and it takes an awful lot to get those those giant muscles moving. Uh, and he probably actually, gave it a bit more willy because he was on his home ground, and he obviously is trying to, you know. Yeah, I, I thought he actually batted quite well in the in the in in, in the second innings, and it, mm -hmm. probably they'll end up going with the same eleven. Uh, and giving Marnus one more go. Um, yes, you know the other option is Josh Inglis, who was also not a top order batter, although who has been been scoring runs. I I, I, th I said this on Twitter. I I think we're going to end up in a situation where the team that lost by two hundred and ninety five runs is unchanged, and the team that won by two hundred and ninety five runs makes three changes. I saw that tweet and it made me laugh, it made me chuckle, um, and I was going to ask you about that. Yes, that's exactly it. We're going to cover that properly next time, but I mean, it's, it's quite bizarre. Um, but ultimately, maybe it's improvements because, look, I think Buddycal and Jarrell are probably the ones who, who will give way to the batters at least, um, provided that Gill is, is fully fit. Um, I, I would assume, like you, you guys have said, the KL moves to three, Roth comes up at the top, um, and Gill for. I think, for, Gil I in think, the middle I think I think KL goes back to six and Gil goes back to three. That's how they they're gonna do it. I'm 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 sure of this. Okay. Yeah. Well, by the way, it looks like Particle and Jurel are, are going to be out, and they've um, mm. I guess they've they've done enough um, to, to 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 give those guys a a warm spot. I think with Jurel, you lose obviously if in the fielding side. You you lose a bit because having a, a random wicket keeper floating around, able to take spectacular catches has a lot to be said for, uh, especially um, in a, when you're away from home in these kind of environments, um, being able to tack, take those kind of extraordinary fielding moments just adds a little of extra pressure to the home side. But, you know, you need runs. So I think you've got to go with 
with Gil, I guess. Um, he is the Gil, incumbent. Gil has Gil has fielded that uh, short leg. I don't think he's particularly good in there, to be honest, uh, at, at short leg. But, you know, there are a lot of players who pretty much every Indian batter has fielded at short leg at some point because of the amount of spin that you have to bowl in. Uh, yeah. You know, it might end up being Jess file fielding. I feel like there, although he's a pretty good slip fielder too. So uh, <coughs> yeah. I think that's a pretty minor consideration, to be honest. Oh yeah, I'm completely nitpicking here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Very much nitpicking. Sorry, Carter, you want to say something? Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, I mean it's a minor point uh, anyway. The fielding bit, but like Gill is part of their first choice slip cordon as well to the fast bowler, mm-hmm. and that's where that's where you want uh, your best fielders right now in Australia. You want your fast bowling slip fielders. So, like, Gil is going to be there. Jaspal is at third slip and probably Kohli at second. So, yeah. Uh, on the larger point of, like, uh, Australia not making... I think that's, again, like... I mean, India lost 3-0 uh, to New Zealand and they come here and they win and they've not done anything drastically different because of that New Zealand result, right? They didn't stop being a bad team then, and Australia haven't. I mean, they didn't stop being a good team then, and like Australia haven't stopped being a good team now. So. Yeah, I suppose the most drastic thing they did was not picking Jadeja or Ashwin for the uh, yeah. for for this test. But all for the a other, fast pitch. <laughs> all, all of the other all of the other choices were injury enforced or uh, or mm. uh, absence. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, related, and it, yeah. It, it, it's not as though Australia have a batter. Who is? I suppose this is part of the problem, but Australia didn't have a batter making an inarguable case. Mm. Uh, otherwise, Marlon Slavishay might have already been dropped for them by now. I think. I think the trouble Australia have run into is that uh, either they have not had enough injuries uh, over a number of years, or they have not been resting players. So, uh, other than Boland, you don't know who they're. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they know who the guy is, but like, they not. Sure had, they, they have... I'm not sure they do. That's the thing. I was, yeah. The bowl is a little bit. You know, Scott Bowler, yeah. Michael Nisa. Uh, yeah. I mean, Michael then... Nisa has travelled all over the world, and has he played a Test match at all? One, I think. Nisa, he's played. Yeah. A cup, he's, yeah, he's played a little. Yeah. Bit, but... Yeah, and similarly, like they had uh, a few years ago, Jai Richardson coming in, and then there's the West. An Australian fast bowler who came uh, to India Lance last Morris. year. Lance Morris, that's right. And none of these people have actually played enough to be like, okay, you know, if if one of our big three is out, this is the guy. Yeah. Or like these are the people in line. Similarly with their batting as well. And again, it's a difficult situation. If you have like a very settled team, you can't really do much about it. It's going to happen at some point. But uh, yeah. Succession so, planning is a thing that happens to teams rather than a than a than a thing they do. Jai Richardson, by yeah, the way, is yeah. currently injured because he injured his mm-hmm. shoulder high fiving someone while celebrating mm-hmm. in the Sheffield Shield. Yeah, he's a handy T twenty bowler, right? Uh, from what I remember as well. So I think he's, he's very... going to fight against Sri Lanka on debut, right? Uh... He's, he's a quick, whippy, fast bowler. He's currently injured. Yeah, uh, but the spare batter is Josh Inglis. Uh, mm. who is... He was on. I think he was. He was on fielding for a bit. Was he? Yeah, he was a li- he was uh, a little bit. Yeah, uh, he's not. Uh, yeah. He'd be he'd be on debut if that were going to happen, but that's uh, doesn't seem that likely. Uh, I don't, yeah. They put McSweeney yeah. down. They put McSweeney down and have someone else opening because they have got eight like other people who have played more as openers. But I think they're probably not. If they, if they were going to do that, they would have already put them. Yeah, I mean Cameron yeah, Bancroft yeah, has scored a hundred in this round of Sheffield Shield, but it's his first hundred of the season. Renshaw didn't make any runs. Marcus Harris made fifty odd. This this young guy Sam Constus uh, made made some runs. Actually, English has English has got a couple of first class hundreds this this season, but he's not a top order uh, batter. They've got a lot. I think we maybe and said this is something that has been pointed out before, but. It, but there isn't someone smashing down the door in the uh, mm. in 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 the same way. Uh, just looking at the squad that they've got for the uh, for the PM's eleven, and there's no Sam Constance and Matt Renshaw are the two that you would potentially 
uh, go with as 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 replacements, but that's so looking for yeah, I mean, Constance is, Constance Constance is a, a kid. kid yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's he's 19. He's in his first first class season. I actually thought Matt Renshaw first time round was quite unlucky to be dropped. I thought he did really well in that that tour of India in in 2017. Uh, but but actually pretty well. Um, but Australia, like, wh- where's the hole been for them? They, they you know, I mean, the top order actually haven't really scored. I think, I think this is the case. I think they're, I think at their top six, Mitchell Marsh is the only one who scored a test hundred since the Ashes last summer. So it's been a little bit of a of a dip, and and maybe you are starting to see some of those guys getting old at the same time. But hmm. like 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 Karthik said, when you've got a team that's winning, it's quite hard to to blood new guys. And the the other thing is that. Uh, like Australian conditions have changed in the last three four years, and you're getting a lot more really spicy pitches there. And so it's an inevitable consequence that you're going to have a lot of people not scoring runs, and like you might still win because uh, you know the other teams not scoring runs either. But like that occasional flat pitch where somebody gets a hundred and suddenly they're averaging thirty five forty for the season and not. <laughs> Looking in trouble anymore? It's it's exactly what happened with India with you know uh, Pujara, Rahane, Kohli all having extended runs of low scores. Hmm. So that's happening to Australia now, and I don't think it's because of the quality of the players. Uh, whoever, e- even if somebody replaces Labushain, they are. I'm not saying they can't go out and score a hundred. It's just that the odds are that. If you thought before this series that Labushain is your best number three, you aren't going to change that opinion in a hurry after one test match. Australia's predicament certainly feels uh, mm. familiar. Um, mm. and that, yeah, I mean, it's everything you've just said. And it, yeah, I concur it, with it that. It reminds I mean. me of the conversations that you have in England. But people are now talking about the fact, you know, there's one Sheffield Shield round and then the big the break for the big mm. bash. Um, That's exactly the conversation that happens in England every time. If England start doing poorly at the start of a of a test summer, mm. like just before the blast starts, everyone starts becoming an expert on how to structure a domestic season. Mm. Um, guys, talking about domestic seasons, shall we... I mean, look, we'll, we'll, I think we've... Have you got any more comments about the test match or, or can we move on? Any last words? I think we're good. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's briefly touch on, on, on the domestics. Um, IPL auction. Um, quite a bit happening. Um, boys to men stuff, I think. Uh, um, knuckle. Boys to boys in the case of the of <laughs> uh, 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 Suri Uh Vive of Should a thirteen-year-old really be playing adult professional cricket? I'm not really sure. Uh, that's a, that seems like what, a, happens, what happens to does it get into like a some sort of fund that. He accesses once he turns eighteen or something. It must be going into a trust fund, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah think he's yeah. sure. I don't. He's not even opening up. Parents, it's probably going to his parents, right? His parents are going to be buying a, a nice big bungalow um, and probably a, I don't know, a fortune or something, and just chilling. Um, I mean, uh, that's the, what's going to happen. The guy is clearly, you know, he's got a, a hundred against Australia under nineteen when he was uh, when he was thirteen. But like, it just doesn't sit right with me. There, there, there seems to be. There should be a minimum age, to be honest, because that yeah, that... M- mentally, I think that you've got to protect a thir- his thirteen-year-old mm-hmm. brain. Hanging around with the big boys is you can become a lafunga very quickly. And just like <laughs> all of the all of the circus around the IPL, that can't be healthy. No, yeah, cricket. and beyond beyond all of that, cricket, if you, especially if you're a batter, is just such a it it messes with your mind, right? Like you you might not be doing anything wrong, but you. You've got three ducks in a row or something because you just got really good balls. And how do you deal with that as a thirteen-year-old? No, yeah. They're going to have to be. Yeah. They're going to have to be. Rajasthan Royals are going to have to do a hell of a lot of pastoral work with that. But yeah, uh, apart, uh, apart from that, you know, Rishabh Pant becoming the most expensive IPL player ever is one of the least surprising things to ever happen in cricket. <laughs> it would have been weird, frankly, if if that hadn't happened. Like, it's kind of odd that he was in the in the mega auction at all 
uh, to be honest, uh, even if he didn't yeah. have a have a have a great year. Uh, Ricky Ponting um, getting the band back together at, uh, at Punjab. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, all of the yeah, say oh, Ayer is going to be my captain, but but I have to check with the boss. Is basically what he said. Yeah. <laughs> the vi- Maxwell and Stoinis bringing uh, bringing the vibes. Archdeep as well. They 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 released him and then bought him back for like eighteen crore. Like you could have just retained him. Yeah, my my sister is a big is a big Delhi Capitals fan. She's very happy that Faf. Uh, is going to be the uh, is going to be the the uh, sexy faff. Oh yeah, man! Well, one of the one of the best looking men ever to play cricket. Uh, Joffre back in the uh, back in the back in the IPL. Be very interesting to see how Gujarat Titans managed to not win the IPL, given, despite the fact that they have Joss Butler and Rashid Khan. <laughs> be pretty high I, up, I anybody. Pretty high and, up, and Rabada as well. If and I was looking at the Gujarat Titans team, and I was like, "What the hell? Are these guys like what are they? It's incredible! Like they, they they've strengthened again, and they've got some incredible players. Like you said, Rashid Khan, Josh Butler, um, Rabada. Who else is on? I think you've got the list in front of you, right? Haven't you, Nicole? Uh, what's the full the full Gujarat Titans? Let me open it up as well. Uh, KK, who do you support? You know what do you, I'm do you talking about? No, oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it because you're a purist, or or you just you, no, no? It's 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 cause I'm supposed I'm a journalist. I'm not supposed to support anybody, including India and whatever. Is the uh, I, oh, they got pressure? <laughs> pressure. They signed <laughs> Washington Sundar for a bizarrely low. Uh, yeah. Fee. It, Three point two crores. Like Washington Sundar. <laughs> It feels like IPL teams don't rate his batting as a T20 asset. Maybe, maybe they know something that we don't because he's a really clean ball striker as well. Khalil uh, Kutsia, yeah. who's a very, very talented, uh, you know, we've seen what he can do uh, against India. Uh, Tevatia there for that one innings a season. Uh, mm-hmm. Shum- yeah, they ret- they re- retain Shubman Gill and Sai Sudarshan. Uh, uh, as well, and Sadaj and Prasad Krishna, uh, yeah. plus some Shafane Rutherford or Glenn Phillips to give it some uh, some thump through the middle. So yeah, it's a very very strong uh, group that Gujarat have uh, have built. Yeah, um, Rajasthan have a potentially terrifying attack with Jofra Archer, Warindu Hasarangar, Mahesh Tikshana, uh, which is which is pretty. They're uh, not going to pick. Th- Three three overseas bowlers, unfortunately, like that never happens. So you're never going to see the three of them play together, which is a shame. Uh, although, to be honest, there are other overseas. There are any other really uh, major uh, big overseas is Simran Hetmyer. So they're actually, it's not impossible. That's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, could happen. Yeah, um, I should just uh, tell our listeners while you guys are looking through those is that we have a new franchise show as part of our stable uh, called the Big Bag. It's on, on the 1129 Cricket YouTube channel. Um, and the, actually, the latest episode does look at all the IPL scores post-auction. If you're on YouTube, the links are in the description. So um, check that out uh, as as well. Um, and give them a follow on the podcast platforms uh, where you're you're following us and, and listening to Kumble Corner as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so, guys... Um, who, who you put, put? I mean, let's actually no. Let's talk about Punjab Kings, Pubkas, because they're the ones who basically threw away everything, like made retained basically three players, new coach. What do you think? What, 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 what do you think is going on there? Because they've been a basket case for years. Is it more of the same, or do you think there's some? Did you see any kind of land with the, with the auction? I think there's a certain amount of like randomness. Okay, first first things first. <laughs> yeah. First things first, I, I, I don't... I mean, Shreya Sayer is a really good cricketer. I have no... Yeah, uh, yeah uh, let me say that. I've, first I've also met him, actually, but I didn't take a photo with him because he was when he was... I think it was last summer when he was hmm. uh, injured, he was in London. Bizarrely, he's sitting outside a Cafe Nero on Regent Street, which is like a really weird place to be sitting outside. And I had a quick brief interchange with him, but I didn't ask him for a photo. I think a lot of um, so I'm quite that, glad he's he's my um, my captain. I think Go a on. lot of Indian cricketers enjoy leaving India because they can be anonymous in public. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's probably not a, like if you, if you're going to be anonymous, don't do it on Regent Street where Indians are walking, like Ranix or Uni, where Indians are walking around all the time. I like me. Um, 
maybe got we, bored of being anonymous and he's like let me go where the indians are and, yeah he said i he, he said i was talking to he was talking to us for him that might be when i said to him uh, he, he was literally him, looking for you he was literally looking for you and you he found did say, him sh- he said i'm sure he said i'm sure i said no no i know who you are like because like, <laughs> this is after we started speaking um, yeah yeah but to come back to, to yeah yeah he's a he's a lovely cricketer and all that but i would not be spending that much of my purse on him i, I just think ipl the ipl hasn't grown out of its uh out of this thought that captains are really important and again like yeah i mean KK, like uh, i i look at how that his his auction went right and there were a few teams bidding for him kkr were bidding for him as well and he won the title with them last season he was their captain he lifted the trophy and everything but i think kkr understand better than other teams that captaincy is just a ceremonial so sort of thing and sure they might be taking some decisions on the field but a lot of decisions are like analyst driven coach driven uh not there's, there's a yeah. difference between kkr and, and punjab kings um yeah so i think not just punjab kings, kings but every team. not just punjab kings but everybody else was bidding who raised that bidding to that level right kkr stopped that 10th row i no, think what i mean by that what i mean by that is mm. kkr mumbai indians csk they generally mm. they've won it multiple times and they've got a, an approach and a and a structure and management punjab no, kings don't have that at all <laughs> which you said by I randomness think, i think there's a there's a there's a sort of vicious cycle element to that because if you are successful you tend to like have i mean you tend to have achieved that success with a certain number of players and you know who to retain because also the owners really will obvious. get off your also the owners will get off your back a bit more if you're winning that's there that's right that's right so sorry yeah yeah no but mostly what i meant was the owners i'm bringing this actually at the mm-hmm. owners Uh, and the senior management not even the coaches yeah so i mean punjab kings went into that auction with basically this uh because they had retained just a couple of players and not big names so they had barely spent any money so they went into the auction and they gave you the feeling that you know they could just pick up like three four like really really like uh, marky kind of names and i don't think shreya sayar is one of them right uh yeah so i agree with you yeah and therefore they're like just starting from there and just how the auction went i mean they have some good players you will end up with some good players but i don't see like a plan or a kind of structure there yet so i don't think they're starting off on a very good footing but that's never stopped that's not stopped teams from like winning the whole thing in the past so Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It's not that dissimilar from the job, you know. Ricky Ponting turned turned Delhi from a joke into a relevant team quite mm. quickly, and it's kind of the job he has to do with Punjab uh, this this time around. Um, you know, there's a couple of uh, like Marco Janssen is is a cricketer who can be a real difference maker, and is is someone who is unusual. Is like a standout in his. Uh, kind of in his sort of style of pretty mm-hmm. not that many all-rounders out there who can hit the ball as far and as hard and bowl as fast as him and he's a left armer uh, yeah. uh, uh, as well uh Yusuf Jahel is obviously a a, a terrific bowler uh mm-hmm. I, it would be fantastic for Punjab if Lockie Ferguson can uh can recover some of what uh what he's about because there was a period for KKR where he was basically a cheat code uh where he was basically unplayable but that seems to have uh disappeared a little uh a little bit um and you know um Azmatullah uh, Omar Zai is a uh, uh is a guy who's come on leaps and bounds and you know Maxi is Maxi um mm. it Punjab The problem with going in with a lot of money into an auction is that everybody else knows that you've got a lot of money as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can end up getting drawn into bidding wars that you don't want to be in and end up having mm-hmm. to pay over the odds for uh for players but I don't know. So uh, from from the north let's let's look at the south. Um 
Ashwina now returns home. Um, Swan Song, I don't know how long he's going to be playing in the IPL for. I don't even know how many games he'll play. But the fact is, he's yes, a CSK we've, man. We've been saying this about Dhoni for four years. <laughs> well, yeah, look at yeah. That. it's quite ridiculous that Dhoni's still hanging around. But the uncapped Dhoni. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, you say no one's bigger than the club. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. He's bigger than the league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's load bearing. Yeah. If he if he goes, the entire <laughs> thing falls apart. He's the only person who, apart from uh, Vijay, who gets the way with being called Talapati. So. I think that's what it no, is. no, he's Tala. He's not Talapati. I thought they were short for Talapati. No, no, no. Tala is Ajit. Uh, Talapati is Vijay. Ah, I'm sorry. I, okay, I, well, that's my ignorance. I, know, I wrote, I wrote ten thousand words on all of this last year, just reading. But uh, no, but coming back to CSK and the squad, I uh, they just did, you know, what they always do, and they basically brought back Ashwin. I think Noor Ahmed is a damn good. Player to have, yeah. Uh, and they, there was a period last season where the Chepok pitch was not turning as it tends to. I mean, they weren't doctoring it quite as much. Uh, I think now it's going to go back to being like uh, they're going to play three spinners, four maybe, and like uh, they have a really good team for Chepok as they always do. So uh, that's a good squad, I think. And yeah. I think they have Sam Curran, Sam Curran back as well, who's a, you know, uh, how much did they spend on him? Uh, I think find four crores. That's that's ridiculous. Like you know, he may have fallen off a bit from whatever, but that that's a steal. He's actually been back. He's actually been yeah. played pretty well for England this uh, mm-hmm. uh, this year. I think I saw somewhere that it's the biggest pay cut in IPL history. That Sam Curran mm-hmm. taken season on season. Also Nathan Ellis, who was also an excellent bowler for uh, for mm-hmm. those kind of conditions with his uh, with yeah. his cutters. Uh, Jamie Overton, who bats for England as a specialist number eight slogger. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's a lot of middle order sloggers actually. Shivram Dubey, uh, Jamie Overton, and I, would, I was going to say Jadeja, but Jadeja actually isn't that big a, uh, mm. a hitter in IPL sense. But Deepak Hooda. Uh, 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 as well, really interested to see Kamlesh Nagar Koti is at, at CSK, and I'd love to see him mm-hmm. like really reignite his career after those horrible injuries that he's uh, yeah just just had. Also, Gurjap Neet Singh, who is a uh, a Punjabi f- who uh, um, a, yeah. yeah a Punjabi <laughs> fast bowler yeah. who plays for Tamil Nadu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him around. He he represents a bit of a sort of. Uh, like a heritage thing, like uh, I mean, there's uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you guys have heard of A.G. Ram Singh, who was like a left arm spinner and a middle order batter, who was like one of Tamil Nadu's early. I mean, back in the day, Madras, it wasn't even called Tamil Nadu then. They're early legends, and his sons played for Tamil Nadu, and a uh, couple of them played for India as well. So there's the Sikh Tamil Nadu player. In the CSK team, which I don't know, like there's something nice and romantic about that. And he, as well. He's got a big beard, and he he got Chateshwar Pujara in the Ranji Trophy recently. Yeah, yeah, he's basically the boomer of, um, of of Tamil Nadu. He looks like that guy who turns up from the other village in Lagan. I was going to say the same thing. To you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, right, gents, we were at feature length. Um, so I think we should probably um, call it a day. Um, we'll do it again next week. Uh, when we discuss Adelaide and plus any other business from the IPL because I think there's a few people who have uh, gone unsold. And we don't know what will happen. Well, with also, by that time, the ICC will have had their meeting and we may know what happened, what's happening with the Champions Trophy. Uh, yeah, also PSL are, are going to schedule the same time as the IPL this year uh, or next year. Which is which is interesting. Um, it, it means it means that actually there will be a lot of employment for players who, who maybe didn't cut make the cut there. But it's, it's interesting how that will 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 go from a viewership point of view, um, because that may actually inform um, the commerce of the game uh, going forward. If, if PSL is kind of um, self sufficient and it has sufficient like international eyeballs as well as local, that might affect. Um, how things proceed with India 
boycotting or not future future tournaments there as well. Um, but right, this has been the Kumble Corner. Um, don't forget to check us out on the socials. Search Kumble Corner, obviously, uh, with two Ks, um, both with Ks, um, and like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are watching it, seeing this, seeing clips. Make sure you tell your friends because there's actually really great content. Despite me trying to dumb it down, these guys bat that away and answer intelligently and answer the question that they want to answer intelligently. <laughs> um, until until next week. Bye for now.